Get ready for a roller coaster of emotions with The Sign of the Cross, a movie from 1932. This film has it all laughter, shock, and tears. But wait, there's more. Stick around because we got some funny, surprising, and touching facts lined up for you. You won't want to miss this. Have you ever felt a movie change your life? Share your story in the comments below. And who was your favorite classic Hollywood actor in The Sign of the Cross? We'd love to hear your thoughts. So grab some popcorn and settle in for a journey through time with The Sign of the Cross. And remember, keep watching for those fascinating facts. Share your cherished memories and experiences in the comments. We can't wait to hear from you. In The Sign of the Cross, directed by Cecil B. DeMille and featuring Claudette Colbert, the storyline unfolds in the Roman Empire. The plot revolves around the interaction between various characters, including Marcus, a Roman soldier, and Mercia, a Christian woman. The narrative delves into themes of faith, loyalty, and the clash between different belief systems. As the story progresses, tensions rise as characters find themselves torn between their convictions and the expectations of society. The film showcases a mix of drama, intrigue, and spectacle with elaborate set pieces and captivating performances. Throughout the movie, viewers are taken on a journey through ancient Rome, experiencing its grandeur and brutality. Despite its age, the sign of the cross remains a compelling watch, offering insight into a bygone era and the complexities of human nature. With its memorable characters and engaging plot, it's no surprise that this pre-code epic continues to captivate audiences to this day. In The Sign of the Cross, Hal Price, a stocky framed vaudevillian, played a reliable role as a bartender. John Carradine, known for his appearances in several Oscar Best Picture nominees, portrayed various characters, including in Cleopatra and Stagecoach. Frederick March, who co-starred with Humphrey Bogart in The Desperate Hours, engaged in daily chess matches during filming breaks. The movie featured an ensemble cast with diverse talents, contributing to its overall appeal. The Sign of the Cross showcases the versatility and skill of these actors across different roles, adding depth to the film's narrative. Nat Pendleton, a descendant of Revolutionary War hero General Nathaniel Green, showcased his talent in The Sign of the Cross. Pendleton, also related to Star Spangled Banner composer Francis Scott Key, portrayed a memorable character. Additionally, Frederick March, who had his name changed early in his career by director John Cromwell, delivered a compelling performance. Pendleton, a two-time Eastern Intercollegiate Wrestling Association champion at Columbia University, displayed his athleticism. Pendleton's wrestling background and March's captivating portrayal contributed to the film's success. Set against the backdrop of ancient Rome, the sign of the cross features notable actors like John Carradine and Dave O'Brien. Carradine, born to Genevieve Winifred and William Reed Carradine, brought a mix of English, Irish, and Dutch ancestry to his roles. Despite occasional rumors of Italian or Spanish roots, his lineage traces back to Georgia. O'Brien, on the other hand, gained recognition in 1950 when he and Pete Smith received a special award from President Harry Truman for their short film, Wrong Way Butch. Their contributions added depth to the movie's ensemble cast, enriching the cinematic experience for audiences of the time. Starring in a 1954 pilot for a TV series titled Meet the O'Briens, Dave O'Brien portrayed a bumbling young husband navigating life with his in-laws. Frederick March, whose stage name derived from his mother's maiden name, delivered a notable performance. Lynn Gibson, educated at Wadley School for Girls in New York, began her career on stage at 16, starting with the chorus of Snapshots of 1921. Later, she joined touring companies, showcasing her talent. Nat Pendleton, upon his death, was interred at Cypress View Mausoleum and Crematory in San Diego, California. His remains lie in Corridor NW9 on the inside of the door frame on the left side. He is remembered for his role in The Sign of the Cross. John Carradine appeared with Bezel Rathbone in seven films. These include The Garden of Allah, The Hound of the Baskervilles, Casanova's Big Night, The Court Jester, The Black Sleep, The Last Hurrah, and Hillbillies in a Haunted House. He also faced a brief jail term in 1953 for contempt of court charges due to falling behind on alimony payments. These actors were really good at acting in different kinds of movies. Some of the movies, they were in one big awards. They made their movies interesting to watch. One actor even spoke French in a movie, which was different from what she usually did. Looking back, these actors made a big impact on movies. Their work still gets people interested today. They showed how talented and dedicated they were. 
That's the story of these actors and their movies. In another stage performance, John Carradine shared the spotlight with Boris Karloff in 1929. Carradine portrayed a dimwit character, while Karloff embodied a figure reminiscent of Gregory Rasputin. Dave O'Brien, known for his stunt work, showcased his skills in various serials and low-budget westerns. Additionally, his agility allowed him to perform pratfalls and stunts in the Pete Smith specialties. Frederick March's portrayal of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in 1931 left a lasting impression, inspiring the character Bruce Banner's Incredible Hulk in Marvel Comics. These actors each contributed their talents to various productions, including the notable 1932 film, The Sign of the Cross. Amidst the intriguing tales of the cast of The Sign of the Cross, significant stories emerge. John Carradine, recognized for his role, appeared alongside his granddaughter Martha Plimpton in separate Woody Allen films. Carradine portrayed Dr. Bernardo, while Plimpton took on the character Laura. Another notable figure, Joe Bonomo, leveraged his renown as a bodybuilder to author a series of health and fitness publications. These pamphlets covered diverse topics, including self-esteem, cosmetics, and household simplification. Among them, don't be a dope caution against drugs, while what I know about women contain blank pages. Meanwhile, Charles Lawton, known for his role, encountered an unexpected halt in his career. While shooting a Hollywood adaptation of H.G. Wells' The History of Mr. Polly, Lawton's plans were interrupted by the outbreak of war in 1939, forcing production to a standstill. These anecdotes shed light on the varied experiences of the individuals associated with the film. In the movie, The Sign of the Cross, Claudette Colbert shared the screen with Irving Bacon in seven films, including It Happened One Night, Private Worlds, Remember the Day, Skylark, Since You Went Away, Guest Wife, and Family Honeymoon. Charles Lawton was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 7021 Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California on February 8, 1960. Dave O'Brien, a jack of all trades in the entertainment business, began his career as a dancer and chorus boy in Warner Brothers musicals such as 42nd Street. He transitioned into being a stuntman and villain in westerns, starred in a series as a Texas Ranger, and became a hero of cliffhangers and rugged adventure, appearing in films like Captain Midnight and The Rangers Take Over. Additionally, he composed songs for some of his western movies and wrote, directed, and starred in a popular series of comedy shorts produced by Pete Smith at MGM. Later, he became a writer for Red Skelton on television and won an Emmy for his work. In one of his memorable roles, John Carradine showcased his talent in a movie called The Sign of the Cross, which is famous for its cultural importance. Carradine was also known for his work in other well-received films like The Invisible Man, the Bride of Frankenstein and Stagecoach. His work in these movies earned recognition, with some of them even being preserved in the National Film Registry. Interestingly, as recounted by his son David Carradine, John Carradine's final moments were marked by a heartfelt gesture. After his passing, his family decided to remember him by reshaping his face to look more like his true self. They also honored him by serving his favorite drink during a touching wake. Another notable figure in the film was Miss Jaw Hour, who left a lasting impact in Hollywood. He was the father of Miss Jaw Hour Jr., continuing the family's involvement in the industry. These stories offer a glimpse into the lives of the talented individuals involved in The Sign of the Cross, a film cherished for its historical and artistic significance.